Uh, the Brandon Area Chamber of Commerce wel Chamber of Commerce welcomes you to our Meet the Candidates Forum. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks to the town of Brandon and the friends of the town hall for letting us use this great meeting place and for their continued efforts to restore this wonderful building. Our only contested race this year is for a one-year select board seat. There are three candidates for the two one-year terms, and we thank them for being willing to serve. <clears throat> Having served on the select board for several years, I know the dedication and perseverance, perseverance that is needed to effectively interact with town employees, government agencies, and all of us crazy taxpayers. <clears throat> I would like to take this opportunity really to thank you guys, the candidates, for uh, your willingness to serve and take on this uh, tough job. Our candidates tonight are Seth Hopkins, <clears throat> Allison Walters, and Doug Bailey. They will each have three minutes to introduce themselves and give a quick opening statement. Then we will open the floor to questions from the audience and we have a two-minute response from each candidate. We'll also allow a single follow-up question if there uh, is needed clarification. <clears throat> we'll end uh, with each candidate offering a two-minute closing statement. I will remind you all to be courteous and respectful to each other. See how they look at all of you? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and because, as a Bernie Carr would say, we are all neighbors, and in the end, all we want is the best for Brandon. So we did not flip a coin or anything, but I would like to go back to the old English way of doing things and have ladies go first. How's that sound? Gentlemen? Great. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> um, So I'm Allison Walter. Most of you know me in town as Allie. Um, I manage Blue Moon at Indy downtown. I'm using the old Duke's building. Most of you know it is that. Um, I'm hoping to bring a new perspective onto the board as someone from a new generation. Just better represent the town, hopefully, but mostly I want to bring new energy and collaboration between different groups in town. Right now I'm on the Downtown Brand Alliance, um, the board of that, and the Brandon Greenways Committee. Um, I was recently appointed to the Planning Commission, and I know a lot of people in town, people coming to the store, so I have good contact with the community, and really that's what I'm hoping to be a voice of the community and help facilitate communication between groups. Um, so you don't end up doing the same projects in three different ways. Um, so hopefully save the town money that way and um, better serve the community as a voice of the community. Thank you. Mr. Hopkins. Good evening everyone. Thank you for making time to be here tonight. My name is Seth Hopkins. I'm 43. I'm married to uh, my wife Olia, who's a new American. She's at home now with our three daughters uh, who are 9 and 11 and 14. It's been my pleasure and privilege to serve the Town of Brandon on the Select Board for the past five years and I'm excited to be running to serve again. The Select Board is only one part of the larger team that's working together to make Brandon the best version of itself. Select Board members contribute skill and time in administering and steering the town government. But others, including many volunteers, do the heavy lifting. Our town manager, department heads, and full-time and part-time employees dedicate themselves as everyday public servants, whether for a year or for a career. They put in the time and effort to implement the policies the board settles on, and they do it with the resources the board designates through the budget that we write and recommend to the voters. Town staff are the ones who find the grant funding, they work with our legislators and governor's administration. They answer the phones to solve residents' problems. They maintain our roads and public spaces, keep our wastewater operating safely, provide for the protection of people and property. They facilitate business development to keep our downtown vibrant and provide recreational and enrichment opportunities for Brandon folk of all ages. They can do all this if they have a select board that effectively translates our community values into thoughtful policy and sound financial plans, and a select board that earns and deserves the support of the voters of the community. I'm very pleased to have been chair of such a board for the past three years and a member of the board for the past five. During that time, my understanding of what makes a good select board member has been matured. Experience has tempered what may have been a little youthful impatience and perhaps even impertinence early on. <laughs> Certainly a number of folks have shown great composure and forbearance <coughs> with me, 
Think of Mr. Fuller when he was board chair. And I have tried to emulate their patience with those who come to the board now. As I've said, we're not the Ayatollahs. We're five of your neighbors sitting around a table in the cellar of the town hall twice a month trying to do our best by the community that elected us. I hope that you'll consider where we've been as a community, how far we've come, and keep the momentum going by re-electing me to the select board next Tuesday. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Bailey. Well, good evening. Thank you all for coming out. Um, I moved to Vermont in 1978 and came to Brandon in 1982. Uh, since being in Brandon, I've been involved in a, in a number of things. Uh, I was a first in the Brandon Chamber of Commerce, and I was a vice president of the chamber for two years, and I believe to this day still the only person that may have been silly enough to be president of the Chamber of Commerce for three consecutive years. Um, after that, I moved on to the school. I was on the Otter Valley School Board for six years, vice chairman all of that time, and then proceeded into working with the Vermont Department of Education on school initiative projects. Um, all the time that I was doing that, I was also full-time employed as a banker in, out of Rutland, Vermont, and then in 82 came to Brandon to run the, what was then the first Vermont Bank. Um, I feel that I know the town of Brandon very well, and in, I think it was 2014, when things were struggling, I was uh, asked to join the select board, or, or volunteered to join the select board, and was named to a slot, and then have been elected ever since. Uh, like Seth, I believe the select board is an integral part of operating the town, but it comes with a total teamwork with the town and the administration and all the people um, throughout town. The select board really just kind of starts the ball rolling and, and gives guidance and sets policy. Um, so that's who I am and why I'm here. I'd like to stay on the select board. I feel that we have uh, accomplished a great deal in the last five years. Um, and we're about to hit the very finish line of segment six and Park Street. Those are two projects that when I came on board uh, were just dreams. And they're things that I want to see become, reach the finish line. And have the financing and the finish paying of them um, reach the finish line because we're at the point now where we have spent all the grant money and we've spent the uh, the matching money that was bonded for probably 10 years ago and so it's where our 1% money has to kick in and so that we don't have to come back to the voters and ask for a big chunk of money again and, and that's a very important step so that's what I have to say. Great. Now I'll open up the audience and um, please uh, state your name and your question clearly. Thank you. Anybody have a question for the candidates? All right, let's close it up then. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody got a question for you guys. I have a question. Uh, um, hi, um, can you, I'm, I'm sorry, Brett, can you just write your name? Oh, so works. Yeah, so the microphone here. Um, you. Ali, you recently said in the paper, right now it seems like the meetings are really focused on nitpicking and getting down to semantics instead of broader things people are presenting to the board. And it seems like there's a lot of jargon being thrown around. Meetings that should take 45 minutes are taking two hours. I feel the select board should be there to serve the community and it seems like right now people are kind of intimidated to go and talk to them. So I'd like for you to kind of tell me I, I go to a lot of select board meetings, and the semantics when they're passing <clears throat> motions and things are, are very important, how things are worded and what gets voted on. And I think my experience has been that the board's very approachable. So I'm confused by that statement, having attended so many of the meetings. And I know that you're recent to coming to these meetings, so would you tell me yeah. why you feel that way? Yeah, I guess it's more um, from hearing the people in town and the different boards I've been on, um, the Greenways and the Brandon Alliance, um, different issues with come about the town, um, and the big one, talk about clarifying the chamber and parking. And, and that's sort of one of the main reasons I started going to select board meetings. I kept coming up in these meetings and people seemed 
ooh, it's a select board, we can go present to them, we can draft these emails, we can make them like too decisive. Um, and basically it seemed like the select board was kind of this high and mighty power and people didn't really want to go approach some of their problems, it kind of resolved them themselves first. Um, and so I started going to select board meetings to see what it's all about. I sort of understood where they're coming from. Uh, it's not a very diverse board. Um, for certain people in town, it's a little difficult to approach them um, with different concerns. And so that's really kind of where this all started coming from, was I hope to make, as someone who's in the town a lot, people see me in the store, different boards in town, I might be a more approachable person. Um, I know you have history with the select board, so you've sort of come to understand them, and they're more approachable to you than some people um, in town that I've heard. Um, I think, was there another part to your question? No, no, I just, I, I just feel it's a misconception that on people's part, that M the board is Maybe, but some people have said, so obviously they're getting it from somewhere. Um, and something could change to make the board more approachable. I'm hoping to be that person um, and help facilitate communication between groups because right now there isn't really anyone who goes to all different meetings in town. Um, and especially this year is coming into a the sort of first year without major construction. We have a little bit on the corner over here. Um, but someone who actually lives downtown and works downtown um, will be able to bring that energy and what needs to happen there um, and better market the town. That's kind of my main focus, especially on the DBA, is advertising and marketing. Um, and I've talked to different people in town. Um, with the Greenways are thinking about updating the Gateways community flyers and putting them out um, over three minutes. Hopefully that so better. I, I, I want to mark the town a big year. Um, so I'll be able to do that with that background that I have. Any clarification in the second question? Well, I think some of it was had to do with your comments about the meetings themselves being nitpicky and taking yeah. too long and the discussions, which I know, um, you know, one of the new members of the board, Tim Giles, is trying to promote more discussion and more of that. And, okay. and, uh, and the semantics, I feel, is important when they're passing motions. Is you, if you pass any law, the semantics is very important. Um, so I, I was yes. just... But sure, that, um, I think one of the things I can think of was not this last select board meeting, but the meeting before, um, talking about the writing of the mosquito plan for the BLGS in the, the yeah the fort, and it sort of it was a lot of going back and forth, and it was sort of decided from the get go that it wouldn't make a difference because it can't be edited in the plan anyway. Um, for the report for the town, and we sort of keep going on this like 20 minute back and forth, and that's sort of where I feel like this unnecessary time um, for people who attend the select board meetings and kind of discourages people from attending select board meetings because that's kind of what they're known for is kind of going back and forth. It just seems like um, unnecessary issues, especially since um, in the first five minutes it was decided that it couldn't be edited. Um, and yeah, we're kind of discussing the wordage of what it could possibly be, even though it was sort of a null point at that point in the meeting. <clears throat> That's what I was getting at. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Any other questions? Would you would you allow? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Follow up. I was, I was, uh, I, we should we should allow all candidates at least two minutes on each question. I apologize. I don't think it's take two minutes, but um, <clears throat> so I, I'm troubled to hear that people are at all intimidated by the select board and I can think of a number of times when I've sat at these tables and folks have come in who were clearly not intimidated by the select board and gave us a good dressing down and then walked out the door and that's one end of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum is evidently people who are intimidated and I don't think anybody ought to be intimidated to come to their select board or their town manager um, that this is what we're here to do. Like, there's, there shouldn't be any sense of um, you're interrupting the business of the town. There's, there's clearly a spot on the agenda for public participation. And in fact, on every agenda item, we try to ask for further public input even after the board has had its discussion. So I hope that that perception can be dissipated in the town. 
As far as that last meeting, I remember it well, or the two meetings ago, about um, the uh, Mosquito District report that was going into the town report. And, and I do want to say in defense of the board, it's a balancing act to try to decide whether we're going to be super efficient or whether we're going to have a full airing of all the views. And that's basically my job as board chair, is to strike some kind of reasonable balance between moving things forward and respecting the fact that we're all giving of our time and the people who come to participate in the meeting are all giving of their time. And on the other hand, making sure that the one person on the board who had that issue could be fully heard. And that person wound up at the losing end of a four to one vote, but I think it's very important that they get a chance to make their case to the board. And lastly, um, I did also read um, in, the, in the article about you know, the time that you mentioned and the board meetings going along and stuff. And I, I did a little study of the minutes of the board meetings as they were um, on the town website. And I'll, I'll just um, offer that to you for something to look over. Our, our board meetings have been regularly <coughs> under an hour for the last five years, or four of them, for the last four of the five years that I've been on the board. And that's against some board meetings back in the day that would run two and a half, three hours. So I, I think we run a pretty efficient select board meeting. Okay. Mr. Bradley? Yes, I, I would just respond in that, um, because you mentioned it, that the Brandon Mosquito, <coughs> uh, Brandon Lester, Salisbury, Goshen Mosquito District, the question that night was whether we should edit their report. And they're a separate entity. Mm -hmm. And so, Four of the board members certainly felt that we had no right to change something in their report that they presented to us to be printed because they are not overseen by us at all. So it just clarifies, and, and that discussion did last longer than most discussions. Um, I, I found your, your remark about the meetings being long interesting because I've worried that our meetings have become so short sometimes. There are nights that we've come in here and we've gone through our agenda and meeting and been out of here in 32 minutes and it's like, wow, how did, how did that happen so fast? <clears throat> Whatever. So I think Mr. Hopkins always runs a uh, very professional uh, meeting as, as, as chair. Thank you. Further questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, hi. My name is Claire Stone, and I moved here to Brandon with my family at the end of the mm -hmm. summer. And I want to say that we love it here and are getting our heads and behinds out of our boxes and uh, getting out a little more in the community to see how things work. And I'm wondering what's the best way for a new person to get a feel for the select board and meetings and lines of communication? so that we can be better informed. We'll be voting next week, and um, it's an interesting ballot, and we're trying to scramble to make sure we understand the budget and all of those things. So, thank you. Since uh, Mr. Bailey was the last one to speak last time, we can start this time. <coughs> get to start. Okay, great. Um, first, welcome to the town. Glad you're here. Um, as I said, I've been on the select board now for five years. I remember when I started at the select board, it was a time where Brandon was in some dark times. We were having trouble getting budgets passed. We were, um, things weren't getting done. It was post Hurricane Irene. There was a lot of destruction downtown. Our parks were torn up and not repaired. And there were a lot of people coming to select board meetings and expressing anger and, and problems. And I can clearly remember my first couple of meetings here that I felt that the select board started the meeting, they looked out and said hi to everybody, and then they looked down and they refused to, you know, heads kind of turned left and right and whatever. And, and over the next little bit of time, we, we clearly said we have to engage the audience and the people that are here, they're coming to talk to us about problems and suggestions and we need to listen to them. In every agenda, there's a, a time slot for people to give us public input on anything. There's a second time during the, any item that is on the agenda that we're talking about, we allow people to chime in and tell us what they may be. <coughs> and, it, and I feel that the flavor of the select board meetings over the last five years has changed dramatically and we welcome input. Also, every single select board member has emailed through the town and I can tell you in my five years I received numerous phone calls at home 
where we try to help people and answer their, their questions or problems. Many times we cannot solve their problems, but we can point them to where the, the correct answer can come from. So that's how we handle problems. Now, where, how do you get engaged? I mean, come into the town to the, to the select board meetings. It's fantastic. You will be welcome. We will not look at you as the enemy. Um, and then there are many other events in town, um, the arts and music and events here at the town hall have, have become huge. The free summer concerts um, every Wednesday night, I believe, Mr. Hopkins is joined the lead. There's just so many ways in this small town to become engaged, and, and it's one of the things I like best about Brandon. So, Thank my you. answer. Ms. Hopkins? Sure. Um, I also want to relay my welcome, personally. Are you around, around the corner neighbor of mine? I am on yeah. uh, five marble. There we go. Okay, so, um, so I, I predict you will have a neighbor on the select board next year. Right. <laughs> um, but as far as how to get information and so forth, um, TM and TM would be my two pieces of advice, the town meeting and the town manager. So the town meeting, basically this year, there's only two articles on the town meeting um, on the Monday night part. We're going to have a, a budget deconstruction, and that will be the kind of, you know, there are 200 line items in the Brandon town budget and six pages and notes and comparatives and we take questions on all of them and we do our very best and the town treasurer is there and the town manager is there and so forth. But that's, that's a good way at this point to get a handle on the town budget. You can get a handle on the town budget going forward just by showing up at the budget writing workshops. We have like two workshops usually in November and two in December and one or two in January to actually write the budget kind of from scratch every year. And those, those are all open to the public meetings. We have a budget committee that's, that's a, you know, kind of a not fixed number of people if you have an interest in that you'd like to serve on. And then in terms of between board meetings, you know, the town manager is a great resource. He's the other TM. So he really is the day-to-day -day person who is much more in the weeds of everything that happens in town. And he's got an open door policy and you can drop in on him. He's there most days unless he's at a meeting trying to, you know, shake some state money out of Montpelier for Brandon. So I think those are a couple of places to couple of places to start. Thank you. And thank you all for uh, serving and your interests. So I guess I'd add to that, since you're new to town, um, this last spring I started the Brandon Instagram account. Uh, it was mostly as outreach because during construction um, I had people in our store that didn't know we didn't have construction going on downtown the weekends. And there wasn't a lot of outreach to people who were new to town, who were visiting town, um, guests here. And so I started that as outreach. So if you have Instagram or Facebook, I'd say the best way would probably be to follow um, the Downtown Brand Life's Facebook page or follow the brand Instagram account. And I try to post all events that happen in the library, um, different music that goes on um, at the Compass and the Brand Opera House. Um, so that's a really good way to get involved, start going to events and meeting new people. And then if you want to join select board stuff, you see what I did, you just show up to the meetings every other Monday, and you get pretty involved and get in all the juicy details that are happening in town before most people do. Um, and Dave is really open, he's great by the town offices. Um, he's good at email, I'm going to meet him, and he really has all the nitty gritty that goes on in town. Um, so if you have any sort of questions about specific projects in town, he's the one to go to there. But really, it's just getting to know your neighbors. Um, honestly, walking your dog down the street is an easy way to meet people and get information. Um, or going to the library. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone in town has different events that go on here, so that's really the best way to meet people and get involved. Well, I think we know all the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Another question? Well, and can't you get an item on the agenda? For the meeting, if they submit it, by yeah, at any select board meeting, absolutely. By the, you uh, have if to they go, it. so the select board meets the second and fourth Mondays, so they write the agenda the Friday before that. So you have to get into the town office sometime, you know, leading up to the meeting that you want to be on the agenda for, and you can always bring something up just off the floor. But if you want actual action or you want to get information to the board, then it would be wiser to bring it uh, to the town office ahead of that Friday before the Monday meeting. 
Great. Any more questions? Come on. There we go. Yes, sir. Uh, David Roberts. Uh, I'm a neighbor on Park Street. Um, I, for all of you guys, what is your five-year vision for Brandon, and how do you think, as a select board member, you would be able to impact that now, given that visions take a while <coughs> to get going? Well, I'll let Mr. Hoffman go first on this. So, uh, thank you for the question, David. I think that the things that the select board should mostly be concerned with are pretty unchanging. And um, the ones that we've got to work on now for the next five years are staffing appropriately. So how large of a police force do, does the community require, desire? How do we attract and retain law enforcement officers when we're in this economy where you know, we are definitely, admittedly, at the low end of the pay scale for a law enforcement officer in Vermont? We just are. We're a very small town to be supporting the police department, especially of the size that we support. So we have this problem, this challenge in Brandon, which is one of the things that, you know, in five years, would we be able to solve it? I don't know. But we have this challenge of both attracting and then training and then retaining the talent that we get in that department. And it's not all that different in the highway department. It's tougher and tougher to find someone with a CDL endorsement who wants to do this kind of work for this kind of money for a town. So um, I think staffing is definitely something that the select board is going to have to figure out um, in terms of how we can fund these departments. I mean, there have been grant opportunities for um, police departments before that don't exist anymore. Uh, we, have, we have to figure out what the right size is for our tax base and for our community needs. So, so that, that's one key vision that I would have. And then the other parts of it are related. Um, it would be just generally strong finances, especially finances that do not rely on increasing property taxes. So we've identified as many sources as we can outside of the property tax, like the local option tax, like matching funds. I'm a big, big proponent of, you know, let's put out some of our money to get somebody else's money to do a bigger project. We're not going to try and and be a Lone Ranger in terms of doing any kind of public works projects in this town. Thank you. Ms. Walter. So I have a bit of a different take. Um, I was sort of thinking more broad scale, and my vision, especially now that we've finished this project revitalizing the downtown, um, <coughs> of young families moving to town, I'm hoping to support that. As part of the reason why I want to be on the board, is I'm hoping to draw people my age into town or to stay here. Right now we have a lot of loss from our high school. People move out, they don't see a lot of opportunity in town. So I'm hoping to drive downtown businesses, boost the economy with increased businesses downtown. Um, people come and see our downtown thriving. It looks really good. Um, they want to move here and stay here. Um, so it's sort of a cyclical motion there. Um, and also off that, um, my five-year plan with the greenways thing is increasing our use of new walkways in town and green spaces and the overall goal of connecting to the high school and the elementary school, so multi-use trails there as an overall goal of sustainability. So I think that's a new big thing in our future um, is sustainability of the downtown, both economically and environmentally, um, is going to be a big thing in our future. Um, I think our police force is irresponsible right now. I think they could use more support. Um, but in any instances we've had in the downtown, um, Chief Perkel is, is really great. Um, they do need more support there, so I definitely support that. Um, but really, I'm looking at overall big picture, um, trying to drive people to town. Um, we're pretty there right now. I think last I knew, Bill Moore said there were only 14 houses for sale on Park Street. It's pretty well sold. Um, so I just sort of continuing to support the downtown and help draw people here, younger people, to support the economy. Thank you. Five-year plan. Uh, it's always fun thinking of five years because it's so easy to think back five years. But uh, Park Street certainly key one. That we know it's all set now. Been, uh, we have a contractor ready to start this spring and get it done. Uh, that's really important. 
continuing to pave streets around town that had been let go for many years. Um, and not spending all of, all of that paving money in one, any one area. If you come to town meeting, you'll see a map that's going to show what streets and how we've tried to spread, spread out the paving to many different locations. Um, but the, the main thing to think of is what the select board's job is. We, we have a, a, town meeting, a town manager form of government here in Brandon, which means the town manager does the basic stuff. Our job is to, to help in financing, policy, and staffing. So we really got to keep our five-year plan from the select board thinking of those three areas. So if I think of those three areas, I can, again, look back and say I can remember four or five years ago when people were saying our tax was so terrible, we're not getting anything for our money, and what are we doing? We need to attract business. Well, one of the ways to attract business was to rebuild downtown and, and get things going. <coughs> so far, as businesses have left, we have been able to fill the business sites back up, and we still need to continue to attract more business. That's always a goal. We have, we have used our revolving loan fund and our tax stabilization plan um, to help facilitate that in the last couple of years. Uh, I know I'm coming up against my time limit, so i got to speak quickly. Uh, one of the ones, we have a, a solar project that's, that's in the uh, permitting process that would go way down the end of Carver Street, almost down into Florence. Uh, started out as Ranger Solar, now Davenport Solar. And when that project comes on board and happens, there is a cash infusion to the town of Brandon, which uh, they wanted money to, they were giving money, and we, we have designated for it to go towards economic development. So I could see restocking our revolving loan plan so that we can continue to help businesses come into town with secondary types of financing. Um, and one big one uh, in town is the, the sewage treatment plant. It was built back in the 1950s and has had very little improvements or uh, worked on it. And it's starting to reach its limits as to what it can do. And then this project that's gone on with segment six and with Park Street next year, where we are putting in new sewer lines and things like that. But eventually we're going to have to look at money being spent down at the sewage treatment plant which will show up on the bills of the people who have uh, are, are tied to the source system. So those are the kind of projects that still are out there. Any clarification? Those are pretty good answers. Those are great answers. <laughs> <laughs> Next. I have a follow-up to that, if I may. Um, just make sure anybody else have a question before we let Brett go in. Uh, this has to do with the plan, because I, I noticed in the report that uh, it's been since 2016 that the Planning Commission did a report and they're tasked now with redoing that. So are some of these trails and stuff part of the Planning Commission's task and, and a growth policy or what is the limits on the Planning Commission and their uh, task that's been given to them to update the plan? Well, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm not even sure. So I, my understanding of the select board is, it's more than finance and policy. From what I've talked to people, it's sort of more um, should be looking to the future and kind of overall. It's very related to planning commission, um, but kind of the overall picture and direction where you want the town to go. Because we have a town manager, um, our town treasurer, our town clerk are doing a great job with the finances and please kind of sign off on what they say, make sure everything's in order. Um, but we really don't have a huge, huge job there. I know we oversee everything, but I was sort of going more for an overall um, scheme of what the town should be going for in the future, obviously incorporating the solar power project on Carver Street, um, the police office force. Um, so I'm not exactly sure where the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission ends and select board begins, so I can't add total clarity there, but definitely right now in the Planning Commission, the town plans, um, they mention increased public paths. So I would think that would be included, um, but also they have signed off by a select board, so they definitely be involved in that plan. <coughs> Mr. Hopkins. So, um, the 2016 town plan would be a five-year town plan. Like, that's that's what we do. So it, it'll be due next year to be redone. And the town plan, generally speaking, is both um, an inventory of what 
the situation is in the town in terms of infrastructure, the economy, utilities, resources, that kind of thing. And it's an aspirational document for what the community wants to see developed in that five-year period when the town plan will apply. So Brandon did a bunch of smart things. Um, we have a certified local government status with the state, which means that we get substantial deference on various parts of it. We have the um, one thing that the planning commission did was ask the select board to create an energy committee, which the select board did, and then that energy committee came up with the preferred solar siting and the enhanced energy plan. And that got inserted into the town plan in between the five year periods. And that's one thing the select board did to try to make sure that we had good community input on where there would be solar arrays sited in our community. And in fact, um, it was only by kind of the grace of the developer who had identified a really poorly sited solar uh, array installation that he backed out of it, or they backed out of it, even though we hadn't quite had that document done. But now going forward, we do have that substantial deference, so the community's input will be there. So um, the Planning Commission has those two duties. The Select Board has its duties, which are general oversight of the town. But it's, you know, really what we're in place to do, and this might be just a philosophical difference, it's not a factual difference. Um, what I think the Select Board is here to do is to just provide the conditions for people to run their households, start and run their businesses and expand their businesses and pursue the quality of life that they want to have while respecting community values. So I think that we're more of a set, we're more of a kind of set the environment so that people can pursue things and less of a directing entity. Great, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bannon. I'll keep it very brief. The Planning Commission <laughs> works separately of the select board. Uh, they will be challenged with this plan coming up in 2016. They bring it to the select board uh, and have public hearings um, here. We do this each time that the, um, the, the town plan becomes official. Uh, unfortunately, not enough people come to the hearings. We used to have a hearing an hour before our select board meeting, and the only ones in this room are the five selectmen sitting here waiting for someone to come in. So there's very little input. Uh, at the last select board meeting, uh, we just added Alley to the planning committee, and uh, we have um, added Ralph Ethier to the planning committee. Two new members, and we are increasing the planning committee from five to seven members. We still have one open slot there. Uh, the planning committee used to be seven members, and they had difficulties getting a quorum of four, so an attempt was made to, to decrease the planning committee to five people. And unfortunately, with five people, you needed three, and they were not having a quorum then. So we had two people step up who both wanted to be on the, on the committee, and we thought that was great. So uh, there's still room for somebody else if somebody else wants to join in, and we wait to see the results. It's out of the board's hands. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi. My name is Neil Sons. I am an another one of the five Marble Street residents, newcomers. Um, I've heard several people mention um, improvement to Brandon, um, new businesses coming to Brandon, and really the, uh, a lot of the conversation that I've heard is that Brandon is on the upswing side of the scale. I'm wondering if there are, if you have, and this is I guess to each of you, um, any ideas for what kind of businesses you would like to see moving to Brandon and any ideas for promoting those businesses? Um, what kind of business? I, you know, to me, any business who wants to come into town, I would welcome with open arms to talk to and, and see how they fit into our, our market. Um, I, again, don't feel a select board uh, job is to recruit the business to come in, but to try to have a welcoming atmosphere and help them with answering their questions. We do have an economic development officer, Bill Moore, and he works more directly with them. And we have a tax stabilization plan that we, we started as a select board where if a business is going to put more money into a business and improve it, we would hold their taxes uh, for a set number of years. And, and there's a sliding scale there depending on how much money they put in and, and what they're doing. 
and we've had a number of takers on that so that they can put the cash in to, to hopefully increase the uh, number of employees or things like that, and, but not have to worry about their taxes going up dramatically. Um, and, and then our revolving loan fund, which has helped many businesses. But uh, I think really the first is for business to, to look at Brandon and say they want to come in. Yeah. We're a little challenged on this part of the state because depending on what product somebody makes, the shipping of, of raw materials in and the shipping of raw materials out can be very difficult um, because there's now we don't have great highway access here. Um, so it is overcoming some of those, those problems. So I, I can't say of any particular need that I think needs to be filled. Uh, it's very disappointing when Abishan decided to, to close their store. Um, and they've closed their stores in many other towns also to close their store in the city of Rutland because they didn't have enough volume of business. So uh, we have to get somebody in that site as soon as we can. Thank you. So um, Brand Brandon has this kind of role as what they call a sub-regional hub in planning. So we're not Middlebury size or Rutland size, but we're not Goshen size or Orwell size. We're in between. And that's, it's a nice place to be in some ways, you know, and Brandon, I think that's a historical role for Brandon. That's a role that Brandon has had since, you know, the Civil War and the house scale and all that kind of stuff times. And so because that is the way that the downtown developed, I think that what we're likely to get for infill in downtown storefronts and so forth is probably the best thing for Brandon in terms of keeping the character of the town the same, but just um, just getting more of it type thing. I think the days of us expecting that we're going to have a 400 employer you know state institution, or that we're going to have um, a factory that's actually manufacturing things for shipping out for some of the reasons Mr. Bailey said that's a challenge here. I, I think those days are, are probably you know not part of the future in the near term. And if somebody wants to come and do it, I'm sure the town would welcome them, but. I don't see that as being as likely as just trying to keep appropriately scaled stuff that provides a service to the market that's here or that provides a service to a market that they've identified elsewhere. My wife and I are in tourism and we kind of feel like our job is to bring the market to us. You know, we try to get people to come to Brandon to drop their money and then go home and take pictures and stuff like that. So there's, there's different niches to be filled and I think I think many, many different niches could still fit the character of the town as it is and, and, inc and enhance it going forward rather than changing it going forward. I can answer the question a little more directly. It's kind of my real house, and I was actually thinking about it yesterday. So my, you know, my mom owns Blue Moon Energy downtown. I was talking to her about the Abishan space. I found this really cool. Um, company that does like outdoor gear. It's really not what we do. And I was like, it'd be really cool. I'll do another third iteration, open up like an outdoor gear um, bike shop, ski shop. That's a big part of our tourism in Brandon. Um, we have the Brand Rochester Gap, and a lot of people, especially this time of year, come in the store just out there skiing. Um, I think that's a big part of Brandon's future would be sort of supporting the outdoor industry. Um, we have these beautiful mountains in our backyard um, and really promoting that to people out town to visit. Um, people my age really want to move to town, we have more trails here. Um, and that's why I'm really passionate about the greenways and getting more trails in town because Pittsburgh and Rutland and Bristol just made these really great trails in their town. Um, so supporting that, not even just as recreation, but it's great to get people moving outside and outdoors, promote sustainability. Um, healthy lifestyle, uh, but also as a mode of transportation. Again, my big end goal is to have trails going back from schools um, to town so people can use that as sustainable transportation when the weather is nice. And uh, hopefully, I'll be working with the ACB crew and meeting with them later in March because they have a similar goal of uh, making trails around town so people can be out and doing the outdoors. Um, so some sort of outdoor store, if you, if you want to literally answer the question, is what I have been envisioning as a new business downtown. So if someone wants to pick that up, <laughs> I'd save me some work. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Parking. Parking is an issue. Um, I drive by. When I can't find a space, I drive by. 
Uh, what is the plan for making it better? It really is an important issue. We have a lot of new shops, or we have some new shops. <coughs> Hope we get more, but when you can't park, you're not going to stop. Mr. Hopkins. So, uh, yeah, so in the, sh the short answer is, you know, we have this parking lot that we're working on right beside this building, and once the donut shop goes in, we'll have some lighted and, you know, safe parking with an EV charger, and that will put Brandon on the map for, you know, folks with EVs that want to plug in and do some shopping and dining while they're here. I think that um, if you talk to some folks who grew up here and so forth, they'll tell you that Back when they were kids, they remember Friday nights in Brandon, you couldn't find a place to park because there were four grocery stores. And, you know, I think it's kind of an exciting little problem to solve here. Um, I've been talking with the town manager about this exact issue because there's been some numbers flying around about how many parking spots changed or did not change as part of segment six, you know, and I think it would be useful for us to find out what that number is exactly and factually. But I think that increasing the parking in front of the inn and the bank block at the top, mm -hmm. having the parking behind Provence, having the parking behind the mobile, um, I think that, <coughs> that signage, you know, when we had the, uh, the, the uh, Brandon Resiliency stuff uh, come in after the flood, you know, there's all these kinds of waypoint signage. I, I would love to see the town um, use some capital funding to get those in. So I don't know how much more needs to be built as much as I just need to know, as, as people need to know how to access it. And, and there is also that kind of culture shift that we can't always expect that we're gonna park right in front of the door of where we wanna be. We have to be willing to take a little walk and maybe you know drop into a couple of stores on the sidewalk along the way. Yeah. Mr. Bailey. Well, Ali talks about the hiking trails more ever, so maybe that's part of the problem is we don't have to park in front of something every time. But that joke aside, um, in, in 1980s, I was president of the Chamber of Commerce, and we had parking complaints and parking problems and whatever. And, and the more we studied it and whatever, we found the biggest part of the problem was the merchants were parking in the street. And then there was no place for the customers to park. So then we built the first parking lot in back of the cafe, what is now in back of Cafe Provence. Um, at the time it wasn't paid, we just brought in a lot of gravel, we had LF car to bring it in and, and make off-street parking and, and try to solve it. And I'm not sure if some of that is still happening to the, you know, right now because we haven't got the parking lot down here finished. Uh, two years ago the town bought a piece of land in back of Jean's uh, Gulf uh, to turn into a parking lot and then when segment six was happening we allowed it to become a staging area and so it eliminated it from parking. Um, and it's time to get it back. Um, and, you know, as, as the equipment moves out, uh, they're going to be tearing down that gas station and building the new one. And at that point, we're paving and, and lighting and doing everything. So it would be hopeful that by the end of this summer, if not middle of the summer, that is there. And, and uh, we purchased somewhere between a half and an acre of land. So there's, there's a fair number of parking there. And, and then we are going to have the the big municipal parking signs that kind of aim for it to be there. We have to put in proper lighting so people will feel safe parking there. And putting in the electrical charge stations will will also make us a little bit of attraction for people to come in town and park and charge their electric cars as that's becoming popular. Um, after that, I'm not sure where the next parking lot can be, but it's certainly something that has to be looked at. But uh, that's kind of where we're at. So I just had a conversation with our town manager, Dave, about this like a week or two ago. So it's definitely one of the big problems in town. Um, I have a retail downtown. People come in, they like to park right out front. And so we've talked about implementing different things, like our time limits, how to enforce that. Our police force is already pretty low staff, so that wasn't an option. Um, so we sort of do self-policing downtown if we see someone who works on town, can I get to know their cars, usually someone goes and says something, like Nancy Leary actually made up little slips and stick in their windshield wiper, which is kind of obnoxious but effective. Um, and so I talked to him about the parking lot out back, and I know he just got applying for a $50,000 grant, which I think there's not a lot of competition for right now, and so that's the big thing, would be you know, that the new mobile lot, um, right by, over here at Town Hall, um, and that's hopefully going to be part 
of our kind of flowing people. It's like the main hub. People can flow this way towards St. Douglas House, visit that um, public bathrooms there, public information, and then flow this way um, up Center Street to Park Street. And uh, it's kind of our main hub. And I think there's plans to have lighting, electric vehicle charging stations, um, the bus stop. And with that, I know there's talk about putting in security cameras. People feel comfortable dropping off their kids there to go hang out downtown or take the bus wherever they're going, like skiing. Um, so I think that's the big vision. Hopefully that will solve problems. Um, the parking downtown definitely is a main issue. And I was down talking to the seniors at um, their lunch on Friday, and that was the main thing. So it's really hard for people um, who can't walk that far to um, park downtown, and I know that a couple more handicapped parking spaces with the new construction project in the winter, um, the plows, we a lot of snow there, and I've talked to Abby at Delilah's, and she's had to go out and scoop snow because um, just people in wheelchairs who can't get in, so hopefully working with uh, the town manager and the select board, um, with their road crew, and trying to figure out something for that, so definitely um, it's being worked on right now, but definitely no ways to go before it's perfect. Will it ever be perfect? Probably not, but definitely it be better than it is right now. So. Thank you. Any follow-up? Yeah, one follow-up. Um, and I do park over there, but I want to get across the street to the bookstore. There's no crosswalk there. Is there any plan for that? I think there is one going in. That's coming from the town hall over that isn't there. They're waiting for the construction on the corner to be finished. Um, so it should be done this summer. I think they couldn't put one down where you're talking about because it's a double hill. And so legally you can't do it because it's not going to be safe for pedestrians there. But there is one that's going in on this corner here. So it would be easier to cross from the parking lot. We'll cross seven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right here by the town office where, where we have to fill the hole yeah, yeah. That, that's on the ground this year, this spring. Any further questions? Mr. Wyman has one. Yes, Mr. Wyman. Thank you. <laughs> what are your views? Uh, we've heard a lot about everything for downtown um, and all the businesses downtown. Our biggest employers are on the outside of town. Our water comes from the outside of town. Our schools are on the outside of town. What are your goals and plans that you can do to help the to help the employer or to help the businesses and the residents and beans our biggest I believe our biggest majority of tax from voting residents are probably on the outskirts of Brandon. What can we do to help those businesses and residents? And what are, what are your plans? Mr. Bailey, you're up. Um, well, of course, we've been working on the roads all through town. Newton Road, uh, paved, Newton Road paved North Street. Yeah, we're 73 years paid by the state, so trying to get uh, everything going throughout. Um, you know, I, don't, I don't have a plan per se that uh, right. changes well, or affects, plan, but, but you know anything. I guess I, I guess the outskirts of town are, are the most important, or as important as downtown. Uh, the people live scattered throughout the road. The town has approximately 80 miles of road to uh, maintain. Uh, many of our roads are dirt roads that need to have uh, improvements yearly. Uh, more dirt put on to, to take care of what's washing out with the rains, etc. Possibly new pavement in some places that uh, could use it. Uh, pavement's very expensive. Um, the town has been putting in uh, at least $100,000 of pavement for the last five years, um, some years more than that. Um, and that was something that we, the town fell behind on probably 10 to 15 years ago, and we're playing catch up. And the size of the vehicles that drive up and down the roads now uh, managed to break up the roads, the weather, the tough winters, the ice. Uh, we've paved McConnell Road twice uh, in the last few years, and again, the amount of tough traffic that goes up there to go through to New England Windcraft and the other parts of town, um, you can see the wear. Um, so it's a continual trying to uh, correct that problem, I would say, is the, the biggest thing. I guess my, my first thing would be go and talk to them, because as we stand right now, I didn't know that we had, they had any issues. Um, obviously, everyone needs support. Uh, I think 
the big focus on the, is on the downtown right now, considering that you know, segment six has been the last two years. Before that was a culvert, so it's really been three years of construction downtown. Um, and so most people I've talked to, people who don't live downtown, um, their main concern has been the downtown. So I think that's why it's come up so much, even though it seems like we're kind of ignoring everyone else on the outskirts, but everyone kind of comes here to their grocery shopping. So downtown comes up a lot. Um, so I guess I'd go and ask those businesses. I think if the only real thing I can think of supporting new businesses would be encouraging the revolving loan fund and making sure um, extra money from solar, hopefully, we're going to get EV charging stations and after the first year or two, you get money back on those. Um, it can be pretty substantial depending on how many you have. They're pretty cheap to put in. So hopefully they have a pretty good return on that. Um, just providing financial support is a big one. Um, I have a bunch of people, it's kind of more of a state level thing, but New Hampshire gets a lot of big companies just because they get better tax breaks. Not really something we can do in Brandon as a small community, uh, but definitely looking at proper financial backing and support for them would be the best way to support people in the outer reaches of town. So um, I, I used to live for a while in the extreme corner, in an extreme corner, in a couple of different ways. <laughs> it was still rare. Um, and so when I think about what challenges we had when we lived not downtown, but but uh, you know in a rural area, there's not a lot of town infrastructure up there. You know, like we didn't have town water, we didn't have town sewer. Um, we were on a state road, but in terms of the the dirt roads, you know, this, most of our gravel roads are obviously not in the center of town. Um, there's been a lot of work and cooperation between the town and the state uh, for stormwater and drainage, you know, for hydrologically connected dirt roads and so forth. And, you know, we need to make sure that we're keeping up with getting the grader out there and keeping our unpaved roads in usable and um, safely usable condition. Another thing that came to mind as I was thinking about that part of town um, was because the school is there, um, we've talked about in a couple of different board meetings, um, we've talked about the sidewalk, the lack of a sidewalk on North Street, which is where the biggest employer is and the biggest development that would have kids walking to the elementary school. And, you know, sidewalks are really expensive, but if we can leverage some of our 1% money to get some matching uh, for the Safe Routes to School program, which is part of the Complete Streets and so forth, I think that would be money well spent uh, in Forestdale. And one of the things that has been the most helpful to downtown Brandon has been the downtown designation. It allows all kinds of tax credits and investment opportunities. And Forestdale is a good candidate for a village designation. And you know, the initial, um, the initial conversation has happened, and I think that shepherding that process along until we can get a Forestdale Village designation could do well from probably Woodcraft at least down to, you know, Olivia's and Mallory's Auto kind of thing. Thank you. Need a follow-up? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any further questions? Okay. Going once? <laughs> All right. Bye. There you go. To comment. You guys are doing a good job. Um, and I appreciate that. And I know if you are on board, you do a good job. My only caution is, is that you guys shouldn't live in a bubble too much. You might be. And we have a little youth coming in. I think that's important to listen to. That's it. That was a comment, not a question. <laughs> You're going to love my closing statement. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, um, closing statements, again, we did not flip a coin or any of those type of things. We started with Alan. So, Mr. Uh, Bailey will go first. We'll get out. Awesome. <coughs> Great. Uh, I guess in closing, I would say that uh, I've enjoyed my five years in the select board. I think that the five years we have uh, got an awful lot done. Uh, not only have we built a lot of roads and, and kept this segment six project going, which had been in the works since pre-1980 and kicked around for 20 years and bonded 10 years in advance when the project was expected to cost only $15 million. 
and then coming up with the reality that the project, by the time they did it, was costing $28 million. And now where do we fund that shortfall? We've handled all that. We started the 1% tax to raise extra money. And in five years ago, we were, we had no cash reserve in the town of Grant. None. There was no money in the treasury. And at this point now, we have increased the cash reserve policy so that we keep between 15 and 30 percent. We, we have over, or approximately $500,000 in cash reserve right now. Now what's that important for? Well, if you don't have the cash reserve, when you have a storm come down like we had a couple years ago and wash out Newton Road, we were able to go in there and get all the people back into their homes immediately. Within two days, we were able to put down gravel and get that road open. Without a cash reserve, we would have been waiting for FEMA. We know what happened when we waited for FEMA after Hurricane Irene. So there's been some terrific financial responsibility um, over the last five years, and that is uh, not, I'm not taking credit for that. That is the entire team of selectmen that were working on that, and the town manager and the town staff, uh, that we were able to get all this work done and do this. I think the record for the last five years speaks for itself. We're nearing a finish line. That is why I'd like to continue on the board for one more year. Uh, and I would like to take in my closing to state that in my years I've worked on many boards, as I mentioned in opening, and I have never worked with a better board chair than Mr. Hopkins. So I clearly hope that the people realize how valuable he is to this town. I would go as far as to say, if you're not sure who you're voting for on election day, and you vote for Alley, and you get to vote for a second person, vote for Mr. Hopkins. He's an amazing board chair that you people will miss if he's not elected. Thank you very much. Mr. Hopkins, beat that. I want to thank Mr. Fuller for moderating tonight and for keeping it to an hour. <laughs> nice. Um, I imagine that many of you, or at least a number of you, probably came here tonight already knowing who you'd be voting for. Um, and that's okay, you know, but. Uh, this kind of event is useful for exactly the reason that it gives you an opportunity to interact with people that you don't normally interact with and they get to hear from you. And it also gives you an opportunity to hear from people that you don't normally hang out with and understand where they're coming from. We're all prone to isolating ourselves into our little bubbles. And we like bubbles of people who think like we do, who look like we do, or who vote like we do. Serving on the select board is a great remedy for that because all five of us answer to all 4,000 of you. You may have read in the reporter this week a list of clubs and organizations I belong to. I believe in cooperating with diverse groups of people to accomplish shared goals. I belong to groups like the Summer Concert Committee and the Masons, partly because they each get me out of my bubble in different ways. There is no overlap between those two groups, and I like that. So I thank you for your time tonight, and thank you for getting out of your bubble and for considering me for one of your two votes on Election Day next week. Thank you. All right, so I guess overall, um, you know, my main goal is definitely live downtown, work downtown, it's kind of my thing. I feel it's important for this coming year because it's such a big year for the downtown. Um, and I want to keep the momentum forward. We need to put a lot of energy and money into the downtown. Um, so I'm hoping to add, and I think it's something that's missing from the board right now, is that new energy. Um, I'm kind of have a, a big goal for the downtown. I, I grew up here. Um, I'm really happy to be home. I'm really passionate about the downtown, involved in the downtown, and I just I hope to be able to do my best, and that's why I'm running, um, is to really keep us going and take advantage of all that effort we put into it. And I think by supporting the downtown, we support all of Brandon, um, people who live in the outskirts because everyone comes downtown to use it. Even though I have heard people, I've been in the store uh, a couple days ago who hadn't been downtown in like, the last four years, even though she lives in Brandon, so I'm hoping to encourage people to actually come back downtown. Those people who even live in the town don't know that there's good things happening there. So that's my overall goal. Um, and I just hope we'll infuse some new energy into the board and make it more approachable. Thank you. 
<clears throat> so we'd like to thank you all for coming tonight, um, and I'd like to thank the candidates for all of their great ideas and their insight. And we would like to remind you that town meeting will be held Monday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. upstairs in the town hall. And then please don't forget to vote on Tuesday, March 3rd from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. right here downstairs in the town hall. And Bernie wants to make sure that you're all careful on the sidewalks walking outside. Thank <laughs> you.